started. Um, in the meantime, whilst uh, my comrades are still uh, trying to connect, um, this is supposed to be a panel discussion between uh, the three of us. Uh, that is Comrade Smosa uh, Soklava, the national chairperson of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, and uh, Comrade uh, Jackie Siroke, the Publicity and Information Secretary of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, and myself. My name is Simpu Ash. I'm the national chairperson of the Azanian People's Organization here in Azania. And um, greetings uh, to all of you, and greetings from the Azanian People's Organization. Uh, greetings to my fellow panelists and uh, revolutionary activists across uh, Africa and the globe. Um, just to open the conversation, uh, there is no stating or overstating the correctness of our desire as oppressed peoples of Africa to dismantle neocolonialism. It is the one phenomenon that continues to derail Black people's path towards true liberation, land reconquest, self-determination, and socialism. Since the arrival of European settlers to our shores, our people have been engaged in protracted warfare that gave rise to a permanent revolution that informed the relationship between the settlers who occupied Azania and Black people. This relationship characterized itself as that between the oppressor and the oppressed, the usurper and the dispossessed, the system and the revolution. This permanence in the revolution is occasioned by the response of our people to the existential conditions brought about by the dispossession of our people's lands and their associated resources. The stripping of our dignity and the subjugation of our people that force us to live in abject poverty, gross inequality and hunger as a result of centuries of colonialism and racism. The Africa Unity Movement for Decolonization has to be commended for the foresight in seeing the need to bring together revolutionaries in the continent and the diaspora to talk about the mechanisms of dismantling the levers of the white power structure and enable the abolition of neocolonialism in our beautiful continent. The commitment to our struggle must be unwavering for so long as the invaders of our lands remain in control through proxies of our brothers and sisters who are ruling over us on their behalf. The struggles against colonialism in Azania began as soon as the European invaders conquered our lands. These were characterized by wars of resistance against this foreign invasion. Our people were very resolute that our lands will not be usurped through the silver platter. We learned a great deal from our forebears and vowed to continue with these revolutionary efforts. Political organizations were then established to advance the struggle of our people. With the banning of the Pan-Africanist Congress and the African National Congress by the settler colonial regime in April 1960, there was a lull in occupied Azania, which was occasioned by the brutal attacks on our people after the anti pass protests. This then led to the establishment of the Black Consciousness Movement in Azania in 1968. Our organization emerged in the late, late 1968 when our founding father, Bantu Steve Biko led a group of black students from a National Union of South African Students meeting at Rhodes University when black students were prohibited accommodation, accommodation. facilities. Yeah. If you can unmute, uh, if you can mute as well, thank you. Um, our organization emerged in the late 1968 when our fourth 
founding father, Bantu Steve Biko, led a group of black um, students. Comrades, I was in the wrong session. Let's can we start? I I, I am midway through my presentation. Can you hear me? I'm here now. Can we start the panel discussion? Yes, we can. Shall I, shall I proceed? Uh, if you can hear me. Shall I proceed, Comrade Jackie? Uh, we, we are almost... Um, 15 minutes late, can we continue? Can we start and, and, and go ahead? Yes, I had uh, already started and um, when you were not here, I, I started by just by talking through um, the history of our struggle and I'm just talking uh, through my presentation. So I might as well just continue with my presentation and then we can take it from there. Is that okay, Comrade uh, Jackie? Comrade Hashe, are you able to put your camera on? My camera is on. Can you not see me? Can we hear each other? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Comrade Clava, are you, are you on too? Yes, I can hear you. Now I had to change the equipment. Sorry about that. I saw that. Thank you. I saw that. Comrade, let's, let's start the session. We are, we are behind time. Are we, um, I'm merely facilitating our discussion, but I have to make an introduction, um, a very short introduction of the theme and what we are going to discuss. And then we will have Comrade Hashe with his um, uh, presentation, and then Comrade Gaba after that with his presentation. And then we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a round table discussion of our inputs. We'll also check the question and, and, and answer session to respond to some of the, the comments and questions that our uh, viewers and listeners may be interested to put across. I, I hope you are all, all okay now for, for us to, to, to continue and go ahead. Let me, let me introduce the theme. The, the PAC as an organization, the Pan-Africanist Congress of, of Azani as an organization, took most of um, um, the writings, the ideas, um, and the views of Kwame Nkrumah as inspiration for the movement in Southern Africa. Um, the PAC on its logo um, has Africa and the star shining from Ghana throughout Africa. It is, it, is, it is where we come from and it is how we, we, we view the world from a Pan-Africanist point of view. Um, we also have um, uh, an interest from several other people who are with the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania coming from different angles. So within the PAC itself, there is a, a great number of people who are who are um, by themselves uh, part of the United Front. They come from different angles. They, they offer um, 
views and perspectives that are not necessarily pan-Africanist, but are, are mostly from the grassroots. The PAC uh, has as its members people who have a relationship with the with the land, the, the poor peasants from the rural communities, the workers in the in the cities, and so on and so forth. So the the idea of always encouraging people to understand the perspective of pan-Africanism uh, is, is, is very important and it has to be repeated again and again and again so that we avoid having situations where Africans themselves do not understand where they come from, do not understand the continent and their history because the propaganda and uh, the views that are expressed uh, by the colonialists are that we are a separate uh, entity uh, in Southern Africa, in South Africa in particular. We're dealing with an, an environment of settler colonialism, which is complex and not very clear uh, to people how it works. People still think that um, uh, Southern Africa or occupied Azania is what it is because of whites. They forget or do not really understand the extent and the systematic racism, the systematic exploitation of the human and mineral resources of Southern Africa. Now the PAC in articulating the ideas of Pan-Africanism has to work with um, our comrades in the Black Consciousness Movement. The Black Consciousness Movement um, in Southern Africa uh, uh, was led by the ideas, particularly the ideas expressed by uh, Steve Bantu Bigo. Steve Bantu Biko's Black Consciousness rhymed very clearly with the masses on the ground and, and made people aware uh, that um, to be black is not a curse. To be black is a, is a standpoint that allows you to confront racism uh, and to, to know yourself, to stand on your two feet and, and to be able uh, to contribute progressively in, 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 in society. So the Black Consciousness Movement and the PAC, uh, when the PAC was banned, um, worked together all these years. We now believe uh, at this stage in history that it is important for the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania and the Black Consciousness Movement, as represented by uh, the Azanian People's Liberation Army, to work in cooperation with each other, to to revive the movement and, and, and make the movement be in the streets, in the villages, in the townships, wherever the masses are, in the factories and everywhere else, um, propounding and expressing themselves on the uh, anti-racist ticket, on the, on the ticket of um, unity among the people, um, on the sovereignty uh, of uh, a black, um, a country that is largely black, that is on the African continent that we call Azania, to, to, to mobilize continuously and, and to, to make the Pan-Africanist movement uh, an important feature in the struggles of our people. This, this is the idea of this panel, to learn from Kwame Nkrumah, to to have contributions from others, but to learn from Kwame Nkrumah and to modernize, to go ahead with a committee that goes uh, to, to unite the people, that forms a coalition and unites the people and take us forward. In, in the panel I have with me Comrade Kaba and Comrade Tashi. Comrade Kaba is with the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. And I'm, I don't want to, um, uh, go straight into Comrade Daba. It's far much better if we, we balance this off and allow Comrade Ashe uh, to make his uh, short presentation. Comrade Ashe. Uh, thanks uh, very much, Comrade uh, Jackie, for the introduction. Um, it's a pity that uh, there was a bit of a disruption earlier in the beginning, but here we go. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I had uh, started talking, uh, you know, about some of these issues, but um, it's great for the Azanian People's Organization to be invited to be part of this uh, All African Committee for Political uh, Coordination panel discussion. 
Um, I, I do want to greet uh, you as a facilitator and uh, greet Comrade Clava as, as my fellow panelists and also uh, greet all our revolutionary activists across the continent and, and the globe, um, you know, revolutionary greetings from the Azanian People's Organization. I did it indicate earlier on uh, when I was um, introducing myself that there is no overstating the correctness of our desires of oppressed peoples of Africa to dismantle neocolonialism and that we have to do now. It is because it is the one phenomenon that continues to derail our path towards true liberation as black people, uh, our path towards land reconquest, self-determination and socialism. And since the arrival of uh, European settlers to our shores, our uh, people have been engaged in a very protract protracted warfare that gave rise to a permanent revolution that informed the relationship between the settlers who occupied our Zania and black people. And this relationship is characterizing itself as that of um, between the oppressor and the oppressed, the usurper and the dispossessed, you know, what we call the system and the revolution. And this permanence is occasioned by the response of our people to the existential conditions brought about by the dispossession of our people's lands and their associated resources, the stripping of our dignity and the subjugation of our people that force us to live in abject poverty, gross inequality and hunger as a result of centuries of colonialism and racism. The African Unity Movement for Decolonization has to be commended for the foresight in seeing the need to bring together revolutionaries in the continent and the diaspora to talk about the mechanisms of dismantling the levers of white power structure and enable the abolition of neocolonialism in our beautiful continent. The commitment to our struggle must be unwavering for so long as the invaders of our lands remain in control through proxies of our brothers and, sis and sisters who are ruling over us on their behalf. The struggles against colonialism in Azania began as soon as the inv European invaders conquered our lands, as you know, and these were characterized by wars of resistance against this foreign invasion. Our people were very resolute that our lands will not be usurped through silver platter, we learned a great deal from our forefathers and vowed to continue with these revolutionary efforts. In the march of time, politi political organizations were then established to advance uh, with the cause of our people, um, you know, and, and continue with the struggle for liberation. And this was a struggle against land dispossession. With the banning of the PAC and the ANC by the settler colonial regime in April 1960, there was a lull in occupied Azania, which was occasioned by the brutal attacks on our people after the anti pass protests. This then led to the establishment of the Black Consciousness Movement in 1968. Our organization emerged in the late 1968 when our founding father Bantu Stephen Biko led a group of black students from a National Union of South African Students meeting at Rhodes University when black students were prohibited accommodation and eating facilities on the basis of the color of their skins. The NUSAS, as it was called, was a multiracial liberal organization that purported to be against the system of apartheid. Biko and um, his group of comrades were confronted with the reality that NUSAS, which was led mainly by white students, could never be a vehicle that would lead to the liberation of black people from colonial and racist oppression. As their consciousness increased, they realized that NUSAS, which had a majority of white students, would play the role of essentially blunting the anger of black students towards the system, as on paper, the black students would believe that there were white people who were against apartheid and that not all white people are bad and supporters of the system. However, New South was unlikely to do anything fundamental to change a system that accorded 
all wise, regardless of the political leanings, first class status in Azania. So therefore the walkout from the New South meeting led to the formation of the South African Students Organization, SASO in 1968, which adopted black consciousness as its guiding political ideology. SASO's emergence led to the formation of the Black People's Convention in 1972, as the students were of the view that black people should have a mass-based political organization that would advance the agenda of liberation in occupied Azania. As can be seen, our struggle predates the BCM, the PAC, and the ANC. Our struggle against colonialism is a struggle for the repossession of our land from European settlers, it is a struggle to regain ownership and control of all our natural resources that were taken by force from our forebears by the European colonialists. It is a struggle against cultural domination. It is a struggle to regain our humanity. It is a struggle to restore our dignity. Today, we live under a very confusing system of neo-colonialism. When the white ruling class realized that the effort by our people was too much to bear, and apartheid was becoming too expensive to maintain, they opted to negotiate the end of the system of apartheid. To understand this, we should look at what apartheid was. Apartheid was essentially a scaffolding that enabled the construction of the white economic and social power structure. When the white power structure was built and complete, there was no more need for the scaffolding. It had to be dismantled. And this is what 1994 April election in Azania was. The removal of the scaffolding of apartheid that was um, there, but it meant the retaining of the white power structure. So what 1994 produced was a bourgeois democracy in the form of constitutional democracy. This meant that power would rest in the constitution and not in the people through their parliament, which would have been dominated by representatives of the majority of people. The dawn of, of democracy in occupied Azania produced a government ruled by black people. However, the South African state remained white dominated. All state organs remained white dominated. The South African Defense Force remained the Liberation Armies, uh, the Azanian People's Liberation Army, um, condolences were, were integrated into the South African Defense Force, which then became the South African National Defense Force. Our army, the Azanian National Liberation Army, was not integrated into the SADF because Azapo had pleaded with our people not to embrace the 1994 sellout settlement, which was desired to legitimize the grand theft of our land by the white tribe. Azabo decided to participate in electoral politics in 1999. This decision was taken in view of the fact that Azabo did not want to fight a black-led government through arms. Bourgeois democracies sustain neocolonialism by giving access to resources to the amenable ruling party that will act as its proxy. The ANC was given access to resources that continue to sustain it for as long as it continued with the neo-colonialist program of the white power structure. This is a general phenomenon with neo-colonialism. This is why liberation movements that win the first election of their independence tend to stay in power for extended periods of time. It is the same situation in Zimbabwe, in Namibia, Angola, Mozambique, and many other countries. In our country, you have a situation where the state remains the instrument to preserve white power, the constitution has become a useful weapon to stop radical transformation of the economy. Land, which was the issue that gave rise to the conflict between black people and the European settlers remain in white hands. The economy built on the back of black exploitation remains in white hands. The black government in enforcing the constitution plays the role of a manchingilan or a security guard of white wealth and white privileges. In playing this role, the black government has presided over the entrenchment of poverty. The occupied Azania has become the most unequal society in the world. It is black people in a democratic South Africa that remain trapped in informal settlement without jobs, without water, without electricity, and without sanitation. 
the white power structure controls everything. It controls the tools of indoctrination, such as the education and the media. Increasingly, the dominant narrative is that things were much better under apartheid. Ordinary people look at the falling standards of education, the collapsing healthcare, and the failure of our power utility, ESCOM, to provide regular electricity. Ordinary people say things were better under apartheid. Of course, what they fail to realize is that under apartheid, ESCOM was designed to provide power only to a section of the population, which was mainly white. A Johannesburg hospital would have had no winding queue during apartheid because it was a white hospital that served only 15% of the population. Now it has to serve the entire population. But the biggest problem is the fact that bl the black ruling elite has been adopted into the white power structure and they are doing their best to ensure that it remains intact. For instance, the government spends billions of rands to ensure that the how train runs smoothly. It costs the state billions of rands, but it only serves a tiny minority of the population, mainly you know, white and top class of the black middle class. The taxi industry that serves black people is in a mess. The public railway system that serves black people has essentially collapsed. In the townships, white owned businesses have invaded and pushed the African merchants out of business. Indeed, the white power structure remains intact. Then there is corruption. The center is simply not holding. Things are falling apart. It is under these circumstances that Azapo decided that we should offer our people a real alternative. As a first step, we are working together with the PAC to offer our people a fighting force. We are in a cooperation agreement with the PAC as a front that fights along our people in their daily struggles. This fighting force is about changing the fortunes of our people. It is about fighting for the reposition of the land of our people. It is about the restoration of the dignity of black people. It is about dismantling the dismantling of capitalism and the institution of socialism. It really is about the downfall of South Africa and the rise of Azania. It is important to understand that the struggle of African people is connected. The struggle against colonialism remains. Colonialism has evolved to adjust with the times. Today, the struggle is against imperialism. And those who stand against imperialism become targets. African strong leaders such as Colonel Gaddafi are removed from power and even killed. Countries trying to assert themselves are destabilized. In occupied Azania, there is a growing movement of people from other parts of the continent who come looking for better economic prospects. Others are leaving the continent for Europe to try to get better economic prospects. What should not escape us is that our dignity as African people will only be regained if we have economic power. When we are in Europe or in Asia or in America, it is only us who are sweeping the streets, cleaning their toilets, removing garbage. The image of our collective weakness will remain. And that is why the attainment of real liberation in Tanzania is paramount. That liberation must dismantle the colonial architecture of our economy and our political systems. We need to work together on this. Azania will not become better through the generosity of the white power structure, but through the concerted struggle effort of our people against all forces that seek to maintain the status quo. The, the enemy has converted some among us to be their agents. There is no revolution without casualties. In the end, as um, Kwame Nkrumah would say, the total liberation and unification of Africa under an all African socialist government must be the primary objective of all black revolutionaries throughout the world. It is an objective which when achieved will bring about the fulfillment of the aspirations of Africans and the people of African descent everywhere. It will at the same time advance the triumph of international socialist revolution and the onward progress towards world communism under which every society is ordered on the principle of from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. Forward with the revolution, Congregate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Comrade um, Simpiwe. I, I really understand where you're coming from. 
Without much ado, let's go to Comrade Graba, who should be ready but for now. Uh, Comrade Chairman, uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I hope that I'm now uh, clear in, in, in my sound. Although I have to use uh, two instruments, uh, please uh, just uh, be with me. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to have uh, this discussion in the orientation of uh, our founding fathers that as Africans, we have to find our own uh, solutions. And those solutions are embedded or based in the solid foundation of unity. Because when we are divided, we will always be weak. And uh, when we are united, we'll be a force for good for the whole world. That is uh, quite critical from what I'm about to uh, engage you on now, that we need African unity. Uh, we need African unity from a decolonized perspective because the perspective of the dominant civilization currently, which is a European civilization, is that of division while the African civilization has always been and will be always continue to be about uh, inclusion of the whole humanity beyond just the facet of, of dividing and destruction and the like. African civilization has always been about building of humanity and that's where we as the PAC view the possibility of us cooperating and having coalition as African people to build a, a single organization that will assist us to fight uh, as a united uh, over a billion force as African people. Because if we operate in the current silos that we've been put in, we will always be easily defeated, uh, will stay weak, as, as Groma said. Just in, in short, uh, I'll touch a bit about the context of, of cooperation amongst uh, Africans and African organization, the paradigm on which we have to move, and uh, the levels of, of cooperations that we can have amongst each, each other and uh, what are the constraints and how can we go beyond those constraints and a short uh, roadmap. Basically, from a contextual point of view, we cannot talk outside um, the development of humanity. The question becomes where we are now as African people. And the difficult part is that uh, there are different levels of development of where we live. Therefore, we operate in quite uh, different uh, spaces of, of thought. Uh, you'll see that at some stage, um, societies basically move from this kind of models. There are different kinds of, of them, but uh, one just uses this one uh, to illustrate the point that at some stage there was communalism, uh, feudalism uh, stood and capitalism came into effect. We wish for a socialistic uh, society and uh, looking forward to a full uh, communistic society. What is the difference and, and uh, where we are as, as a people? You'll see that uh, communal is full of of, of gatherers and basically led from a, a belief point of view, which uh, you'll see on the slide that I put as spirituality. 
when feudalism it's more about uh, substantive farming and and then upgrade a bit and you find artisans controlling themselves and you find that this society is ruled by the strongest so the rewards and recognition in this area it's if you are strong uh, possibly physically or numerically you prevail and when you are weak you have to be subservient to those that are are dominating you and where the world is now basically we've been dominated by capitalism i think in this conference in different uh, session it's been highlighted the sketches of the of the capitalist society where it ex- it seeks to exploit it seeks to gather as much as possible for the few and leave the rest uh, penniless and the question to us as we plan how we're going to cooperate on a universal or worldwide perspective uh, where are we going to move from are we going to move from uh, maintaining the capitalist uh, society or transiting to a higher level of culture the culture of socialistic uh, perspective and uh, you'll see that when you look at at the levers of power in that society a money or finance is critical in the capitalist state but in the socialist state it's it's networking and the use of data or use of information that is available to us uh, in the era that you are in of industry you'll find that there is a lot of physical or analog kind of orientation versus the digital orientation of our future as as humanity and that's the question we have to face if as african people we want to sustain the current environment which will then require us to to improve it make it better make it livable or we want to transform it completely as the pac we really see the future lies in reimagining our existence than improving our existence because in improving you just have to deal with with complaints make sure that uh, the financial world uh, it's 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 less exploitative uh, make uh, policies that uh, protect the victims and the like so you see the kind of uh, actions that are more incremental than uh, the other paradigm that we can adopt which is more uh, radical that requires rethinking of how we we even manage our own coalition or our main organizations the challenge that we are facing is that we always needed uh, big organizations uh, in the past for us to be effective however in the future it questions what kind of organizations we have i think the discussion is quite uh, uh, interesting that uh, should we unite as as individuals or should we exploit the 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 organizations that already exist into putting them into a bigger picture that is a challenge that we we continue to look at as we look at, at society from our experience uh, and uh, working as individuals normally we get defeated operating as structured organizations make a big difference in fostering our future and strengthening our our journey towards towards a revolutionary perspective or towards a future that we design that is different to the future that exists under this autocratic uh, nature of 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 capital or of corporations because uh, in the 
capitalist era, every, they talk about democracy, but in fact, we are under corporate dominance because you'll find that our societies are governed by the media that is controlled by the few, does not work in freedom of movement, of true movement of, of, of information. Information is restricted to what is good for the ruling class. So as the value of that information. Um, there have been a number of constraints uh, in the analog space or in the era that we are still has to exit as a humanity. The space and geography uh, has been an issue, but this conference already highlights the future that we can organize without the high expenses of traveling that we always had. The way of disseminating information has been around broadcasting or mass uh, orientated. Now we're getting to an era where we need to pull. How can as revolutionaries create appetite in our society for people to pull our information, which is already available? but we have to go beyond everyone doing his own thing to the higher level of organization where we can be able to have a network effect, both from consumption of, of, of information and data and the dissemination of data so that we are able to snowball our, 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 our ideas to crash monopolies that have been created uh, that do not favor us because we will not have the kind of capital to create the old monopolies that were created in the industrial age that uh, that is currently being moved and it then cause question us how do we increase the permeation of, of digital technologies so that uh, our people have access, so that our organization or our institutions that we develop as, as corporations are able to effect change in society. There are four levels that are normally highlighted uh, that are critical for us to decide at a different time as we get together to cooperate or to have coalition. If we're gonna be at event level, or we're gonna be at campaign level, or we're gonna be at strategy where we create standing institutions that will uh, foster this all African uh, embracement of, of our lives and, and how we govern ourselves. Lastly, the civilization and the culture that, that we desire. So, they are these different arenas on which we cooperate at different times or with different organizations, depending on their maturity. You find that it's easy to, to cooperate. So as the PAC, we don't see a one size fit all kind of uh, organization, but there are different levels on which we, we must uh, organize ourselves. It's interesting that there are a number of organizations that are already uh, in existence. I think it becomes critical that we redefine each of the, of, of the international or Africa-wide, African people-wide organizations that exist so that we can disseminate and find a way of, of working together. I mean, uh, the, the session that we're in for decolonization and for the unity of, of African people under the, the Africa unity movement for decolonization becomes one of the critical point where we should cooperate at the highest level, at the cultural level, where we change the, the existence, where you might find that other international organizations that we belong to as different entities are useful from a campaign, a single campaign point of view. Lastly, as I conclude, we also need to take 
it's very important to acknowledge that the process of, of creating cooperation among ourselves as African people will not be linear. But uh, simplistically, uh, I'm going to present it as linear, but this is an area where we must mature, find each other better, grow to the higher culture. The first thing, we must have a shared vision that we develop among ourselves. What kind of ideological posture do you want to take as, as, as collective, as African people? What exactly is the foundation of our civilization that we desire to build? What kind of society that we, we foresee and we are trying to build? That becomes quite critical for, for us to to view from that perspective. Also, we need to then work on the culture. What are the public policies? What are the regulations that we have? What are the standards that we set outside the Euros, Euro standards that are always set for us? What is good behavior that is acceptable as we work with each other? And we also have to put up institutions we have to brand. The system currently is so well branded that it's difficult for us uh, to penetrate because they create a, a branding so that our people see white supremacy as the best thing for them as, as Comrade Hashe has just indicated earlier that uh, White people, white supremacy always want to mirror itself with black agents or with African agents in, in, in particular. But the brand still stays the same. They control the networks. They control the supply chain for our food. And they control the supply chain for our transportation. And they control the supply chain for all our life. We need to disrupt that superimposed with our own branding of what kind of what is good in society and what should be the appetite of our people even on food or on transportation in the manner that suits us also we need we cannot stay in these three theoretical uh, abstract levels we need also to go to the level where we deal with practical issues in, our, in community, community level issues and hold events like this and events that are practical, that activate and bring to life our strategy, our culture and our vision that would have developed together. Chair, uh, noting the time, I will stop from there and say that um, as Nkrumah was highlighting uh, that we need to build in our own territory first. We need to build a united France that ensures that we liberate our people. But also we need to go further and globalize our struggle because our enemy is international by nature. It's everywhere. So we must operate with a single strategy, ultimately single culture and a shared vision that is forecast. Thank you. Back to you, moderator. Thank you uh, very much, Comrade Glava, and uh, thank you, Comrade Hashe. I, I believe we can now um, expand or discuss some of the, the, the points you raised. I have several, but let me focus on, on what I thought would be key. Comrade Hashe, the, the point you raised about the a united um, approach between the PAC and 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 Azabo, um, and and to build a, a fighting front, uh, a culture of uh, uh, fighting, as as opposed to um, an area where we, we we highlight our plight as victims. You know, the, no one works with the um, with the victim. And we are having a challenge of having to turn around this um, uh, victim image that, we, that, that, that has seemingly been imposed upon uh, the Zanian front. How are we going to uh, um, uh, fight when we have 
so many stuck against us. The, the area of um, knowledge which you, you prioritize, particularly the universities, you know that um, uh, in these new colonial conditions, we, we, we have a dominance of the so-called Stellenbosch mafia. Basically, um, a, 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 domin a domination of um, uh, the grouping that comes from areas uh, in the Western Cape or areas of, of education that is largely uh, dominated by the Boas. They, they dominate not only the universities, they produce people who, 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 who dominate the financial sector and, and through financialization, have a stranglehold on our necks, on the necks of the economy, and, and there's no way in which people can expand. The, the other issues, obviously, you, you've, cut, you've touched on of the, the constitution vis-a-vis -vis parliament, where power lies. Can we discuss those and expand on them? Comrade Traba, I also want you to, to have your perspective on these issues. Uh, let's start with you, Comrade. Uh, no, thanks. I think you. I think you are you are asking very important questions, uh, Comrade uh, uh, Jackie. Uh, you know the the issue of uh, you know victimhood, uh, and 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 the issue of education. You know, one of the things that uh, we we need to learn from is is the fact that solidarity reinforces the power of a people to fight towards attainment of um, their freedom. And that lesson can be learned, you know, not far, not far away, but from white Africaners in, here in Azania. There was a time when there was no hope for them, and they came together, built a solidarity network amongst themselves, and fought against the English to a point where we now have what we know as the union buildings, which is really a, a conglomeration of uh, the, you know, the victory of uh, white Africaners and the defeat of uh, the English uh, back in, 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 in the, uh, at the beginning of the 19th century. So, so in essence, what we now have, what we celebrate every year at the union buildings is a victory of white domination. And, and throughout that time, and with the creation of apartheid, they managed to build for themselves an economy that would sustain them, an education system that would sustain them, and industries that would then sustain their economy. So they, they built themselves up, they built the Stellenbosch University, they built uh, Rao University, they built so many other institutions and finance institutions to support the livelihood of, uh, you know, the white power structure. And which is why we will now have this dominance of the white power structure, because it was built, um, you know, as I said, upon the scaffold of apartheid. And that scaffold um, was made so firm that uh, even when people think that it is now removed, it is, uh, you know, still standing and the, the white power structure is still standing. So knowledge acquisition enables us to progressively grow the revolutionary consciousness of our people. It is very, very critical and important that we continue to educate our people about our condition because that education is the one that enables us to build a solidarity of fighting people because there is no way you can attain the kind of liberation that we desire without uh, the coming together of all of the oppressed people. And um, you know, the 1994 settlement and the e effects that we see of it now are proof enough that we need one another and we need to bring a stronger and a broader network of our people to enable that struggle to, to move forward. Thanks. Comrade Co Clava, any take on this? Thank, thank you very much, uh, facilitator. I think uh, the, the consciousness uh, brought by education and, and practice 
both theory and practice already highlighted by Comrade Hashe becomes critical for us to combat these institutions that support white supremacy. And uh, also making sure that uh, that uh, conscientization uh, to bring consciousness to our people uh, to move beyond uh, the element of, of victimhood, but take and empower our people to combat the system from a positive action point of view, from a perspective which says that we will not stay as complainants, but we will take and build our own institutions that are capable of, of overpowering uh, the institutions of, of white supremacy. I think that makes it quite critical for, for us and, uh, and the agency of, of uniting as African people using our numbers. With us being 1.5 billion makes a big difference in the weight in the world. And we need to start asserting ourselves as that in social, economic, and in spiritual terms so that we are never undermined uh, by, the, by, by other people as it happens now. But more importantly, we don't victimize ourselves because of the indoctrination of the past 500 years of European domination or the past uh, 2,000 years of Arabic domination. Thank you. Comrades, there's, there's also the, the issue we, 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 we need to address. And, and this is the, the way in which the masses have looked up to messiahs to come in and, and resolve their problems. We, yeah, we already have a, a, an experience in which part of the liberation movement, I concede, has um, uh, gone out to, 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 to cooperate and work with the, um, with the oppressive system. In doing this, um, they, they, they usually say it's, it's a, uh, out of a balance of power and, and that to avoid squashed at in, in Southern Africa. Uh, it was far much better to, 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 to go through, through to negotiations and come out with a, a, a win-win situation. Now we know that uh, uh, that theory and thinking has been led by uh, Nelson Mandela, who later uh, uh, became, was, was revered by uh, the international community, which ultimately, and, and the reality says it now, that um, whilst the international community revered him, the, the masses of our people um, were not benefiting from that win-win situation. Um, so, so we have almost a similar thing as a revolutionary being turned into the image of Uncle Tom, a, a, a teddy bear uh, scenario where everybody loves them, but there's nothing in it for us. There's nothing in it for the, for the oppressed. There's no transformation and change that is meaningful, that, that uh, has been pursued. And all other successive leaders after him have, have, have merely con continued in that tradition. And what we ultimately have is a corrupt, um, a government, a, 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 a kind of uh, looting of public funds and public facilities, in my view, a setup wherein a, a, a black government or a, a, gov a largely black government would be seen to be unable um, uh, to, to run the country, to exercise governance, and, 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 and to understand democracy in its, in its broad perspective in such a way that um, those who, who, who are found with their fingers in the, uh, in the till cannot resign. Um, and they, they don't want to resign, but they continue to be in the system and have created a, 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 a culture that we've seen in the rest of the continent where um, self-aggrandizement using, using public facilities are there. All I'm saying is, um, what we have in South Africa is not new. 
uh, it, it's something that we, 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 we know. That's why we say South Africa must go down and we must have the rise of Azania. In your view, Comrade Kaba, your, your imagined uh, future and view that we, we, we in the Azanian tendency come to say is, what sort of cadre, what sort of leadership uh, are we looking at? And, and are we really looking at a people-powered democracy or a lopsided democracy? Comrade Lasher, you also come in, but let's start with Comrade Gabba. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, facilitator. I think that you, you, you have hit a key word, culture. The, the weakness that uh, we have, we stay at intellectual level when we deal with the issues of our nation as the African people, particularly the theories of, of, of the West that have dominated the, the political space, it, it, it challenges us that uh, we cannot have a, a messiah. African culture, African societies before us were not organized around individuals, were organized around community and the individual fits into the community. So the leader is a, is a, the, a leader who has emerged as a leader must emerge as still a member of the community before he becomes a self, uh, self-glorified self entity. That becomes critical. The society that uh, we should look forward to is a society that has outgrown uh, that element of warriorship to the element of, of performance as a, as a whole nation and as a community uh, as a community in specific. So that's the critical part that we must look towards. And a society that eliminate exploitation. We cannot sit in the capitalist world and, and, and think that we can create a world without exploitation because uh, feudalism and capitalism as its, its growth, it's, it's firmly set. On, on exploitation of one man by another. And that's a society that we must eliminate. Uh, you will never remove corruption until you change the way society organizes itself. And all the ills that we have now is because society is organized for corporations to exploit uh, our people. We need to tend that. And as African people, even when we look at organizing ourselves at, at, as, a, as a total nation, we must not organize ourselves around individuals. There will be no messiah. African people as a whole will liberate themselves. Thank you. Comrade Jackie, I, 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 I hear you. And you speak of um, individual leaders changing hands from time to time, depending on the proximity to the till. Yet, you know, the struggle for liberation has always been and will always be about the people. It is never about the leader. It is about the extent to which we are able to change the fortunes of our people. And for so long as we are not able or not in a position to change the fortunes of our people, it, it doesn't matter who you have at the helm of, of leadership, uh, that leader will not be able to succeed. That is the first point that we need to realize. And second, we, we need to take control of our levers of the economy. Because if you don't have control over the levers of the economy, no matter how good a leader you may put you know, in front of the people, the deciding factor is the one who controls the levers of the economy. And right now, we have a situation in our country where, you know, the so-called Stellenbosch uh, dictates the pace at how things are happening and what happens. So it, you may be nice sounding when you speak to the people, but for so long as uh, you continue to satisfy the interests of capital for so long as you continue to satisfy the interests of Stellenbosch, 
it will be the darling of Stellenbosch at the, at, the, at the detriment of our people. So leadership, more especially a revolutionary leader, should be about selflessness. It should be about development. It should be about people. And there are great examples. We have seen what, uh, uh, what, what um, uh, uh, Colonel Gaddafi did um, in, 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 uh, before, before he was killed in Libya. And his focus was really on building uh, community activism. It was about building society. It was about educating the masses of his people. And that is the reason why he was killed, because he focused uh, the economic development and he focused, uh, you know, his effort on ensuring that, uh, you know, the people of Libya were benefiting from the economy of the country, unlike those who are ruling us in our country and their focus is on ensuring that they satisfy the interests of the owners of capital. We may be claiming that uh, we are a free country, we may be claiming that uh, you know, uh, we are in charge, and yet for so long as we don't have uh, the control over the economic architecture, we are not uh, anywhere near uh, being able to lead uh, you know, our people out of the destitution that they find themselves in. Thank you. Um, I, I, I cannot hear, um, my, my system is giving me problems. But comrades, okay. we, 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 in dealing with these things, there, there's a, there's a Q&A facility where con conversations will continue to um, uh, take place. I, um, I'd, I'd like you to, I'd like you to, to please um, uh, sum up um, and, and, and conclude your contributions uh, because I think we'll be over in, in, in the next 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Comrade uh, uh, Jackie. Just, just to sum up, I think it's been a good conversation about the importance of building solidarity and the importance of uh, mobilizing our people, you know, towards building a fighting force for our people. Because there is nothing better than engaging with our people on the ground and ensuring that our people have an alternative that they can look towards. They have, they can, they have a group of people that they can believe in, and they have people that can fight for them. Uh, the reason why we are where we are is largely because of a lack of a fighting force for our people. And I do think that the cooperation arrangement that exists between the Azanian People's Organization and the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania is a building block towards building this gigantic force that is needed and required to transform our society and push for the total um, you know, change over of the system of oppression that continues to exist in our country. There is no way that we will be able to dismantle the effects of neocolonialism without ensuring that we build a very strong uh, solidarity as an antithesis to what is happening uh, with, you know, on the ground in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, basically, sorry about that. Thank, thank you very much, uh, coordinator. Uh, the first and important thing is that we must uh, make sure that uh, our cooperation about society more than more than leaders we need to build uh, more uh, solidarity across the african nation uh, spread across uh, all continents 
we need to work as a single unit. We need to move with one uh, vision of building a strong uh, continentally based government that is that can defend our people everywhere in the world. Because as long as uh, Africa is weak, as Comrade Hashe earlier indicated, that as long as we are weak as an African institution, anywhere we are in the world will continue to suffer. So our destiny is tied together. Let's make sure that we, we do necessary work utilize the talents of all our people, those that uh, can cooperate at issue level, we allow that to happen, and those that can operate at, at uh, a tactical level around a single campaign, we support those initiatives, but uh, importantly, we need to be determined to establish a civilization for Africa. Thank you. A back to you, facilitator. Thank you, comrades. I I just wanted your your final views on this aspect. Um, um, the AUMD convention offers us a, a, a an opportunity to interact with the 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 worldwide movement of Pan Africanists, and I think we should uh, interact with all the organisations. Uh, both bilaterally and, and, and collectively and participate in this convention uh, fully so that um, we, we, we do what Sobuke taught us that um, you can never understand your situation uh, if you don't have an international perspective. So our, our view uh, is that the struggle for, um, for freedom and liberation in occupied Tanzania. It's an anti-colonial struggle. It's an anti-imperialist struggle. And that anti-imperialist struggle is a worldwide struggle of the oppressed people. And our solidarity um, is, is crucial and, and very important for us to unite at that level. Um, it's also very important for us in Southern Africa in particular, because there's a high noon in, in Southern Africa where um, the imperialists have serious designs to utilize our land and our people as, as, as cannon fodder in, 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 their, um, in their trade relations, in, in their exploitation of um, the rest of Africa. Uh, because in my view, it's, 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 it's wrong to think that Southern Africa or South Africa in particular can be a gateway. We can look at it as a gateway into Africa. That is opening the doors for exploitation of our people. I, I, I think that um, through our engagement with other movements in, in Southern Africa, uh, initially, we could be able to form stronger bonds and stronger solidarity because we are closer to each other and can deal with the um, uh, situation on, an, on a regular basis because we, 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 we are closer at the cold face of it, uh, understand what, what, what's happening. But we should also interact with the international community um, uh, to push our struggle forward. Your opinion on this aspect? I, I know, Comrade Hashe, you said something along those lines as well, but we should also conclude our, 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 around our pledge and commitment to um, our anti-racist, anti-colonial, anti and anti-imperialist struggles. Thank you, Comrade Hashe and Comrade Club. You, thanks, Comrade Jake. I mean, I, I did indicate that we are very much uh, an anti-imperialist uh, organization in Azapo, and we are very much anti-colonialist and very much anti-racist as an organization. And our philosophical framework is premised on fighting all of these um, evils, because it is these evils that have uh, brought about the kind of society that we live in, that have brought about the kind of inequality and the kind of poverty that we experience every day in, in our occupied Azania. So for us to be able to proceed forward, we need to ensure that 
we mobilize and organize our people to become the fighting force that will you know get rid of this but for us to be able to do so i did indicate earlier on that it is important that we build global solidarity networks there is no way that you can fight an isolationist struggle when uh, you know the system of imperialism is global when the system of neocolonialism is supported by the global capital okay uh, owners we are done now thank you very much all right thanks thanks uh, thanks comrade facilitator yeah, thank you very much